Welcome to the custom crafted van shop. I'm not sure if we told you guys about the new shop yet. We'll talk about that in a bit. But today we're gonna to talk about two different 12 volt cooling systems for van life that are under $3,000. And before we get into it, we wanna say thanks to our sponsor, Squarespace. Okay, so before we jump into this, Alex is running around the shop trying to find our temperature sensor so we can give you guys some real life data on this AC unit that we're gonna be talking about today. We're gonna be talking about the Dometic 12 volt RTX 2000, which is a rooftop mounted unit, and the Fres Air, which is an evaporative cooler, which is also 12 volt. So we're gonna be doing kind of pros and cons of both. We will also link a blog post down below with more info. Quickly wanted to update you guys. We did actually sign the lease on our 7,000 square foot shop. Not sure we told you guys on YouTube yet. We did mention it on Instagram. So we move in in November. We're really excited. We just hired somebody full time with lots of van building experience and we'll be probably growing our team quite a bit more to keep up with the demand because so many of you guys want us to build your van, which we are super grateful for and we love working with all the amazing clients that we get to work with. So we will likely open up some spots for next year. We're already booked all this year. Um, but with the shop, once we get things cruising, hopefully we can open up a few more slots. So there will be a link for a wait list down below for our van build bookings. I email that list before we ever post about van build opening. So sign up on that. I know there's a lot of info up front, but let's jump into it. It is summer, so all the van lifers are trying to figure out how to stay cool and comfortable on the road. We're gonna talk about two different air cooling systems for your van that are both under $3,000. Now, there are lots of options out there, all the way up to $10,000, $12,000 systems that run off of 48 or shore power. Again, we're talking about two systems that are both specifically 12 volt and under $3,000, and we have installed both of these in vans for clients or ourselves in the past. So these two units are the Fresair Evaporative Cooling System and the Dometic RTX 2000. Now first, let's talk about the similarities between these two units. Both are rooftop, so they do require a hole cut into the roof of the vehicle, and they are mounted directly onto the roof of the vehicle, and they both feature a good looking interior finish, so they have a nice control panel that's built into your roof, and both have remote option capabilities. Second, they are both 12 volt. That means they can run directly off of a 12 volt battery bank with no need for a converter to take it up to 24 or 48 volts. And you don't have to be plugged into shore power to run these units. Now that's kind of where the similarities end with these two units. The Fresair evaporative cooling system utilizes a reservoir that pumps water up to the rooftop unit. They also have a unit that has a built-in reservoir that sits with the unit on the roof of the van. Evaporative system then cools the air coming into the van at a minimum power draw, which allows you to have cooler air coming into your vehicle than what it is outside. Typically what we have found in actual practice is something between 15 to 20 degrees cooler than what the air temperature is outside. And apparently I can't say degrees, 15 to 20 degrees cooler than what it is outside. Now, the next unit is the Dometic RTX 2000. This is a traditional air conditioner system. So it's going to provide maximum cooling benefits. We're gonna take you out to the van. It's running right now and show you, but we are finding temperatures 25 to 40 degrees cooler than what it is outside. And that's a huge deal when you are traveling full-time or part-time in a camper van. It is also a 12 volt unit, but it does not require any sort of reservoir tank or water system in order to run the unit. It is an inverter driven system, so it cycles through at higher power usage and then a lower power usage to optimize the power draw and to conserve energy, but still provide efficient cooling benefits. It also has an eco mode and an eco mode it only draws about 19 amps. So now let's talk about who these units are for as they do have two different target markets. Now, 
The Fresair Evaporative Cooling System is a great model for somebody who is building with a lower budget, but they still want the benefits of being able to cool down their vehicle when they're traveling in the summer. It has a lower price point of only about $1,600 plus tax and shipping. It is going to give you cooling benefits, but it's not going to cool your vehicle as much as the Dometic RTX. You also don't have to have as big of a battery bank. We recommend somewhere between three to 500 amp hours of lithium battery from Battleborn to run this unit. For the Dometic RTX, this unit runs at about $2,600 plus tax and shipping, and you are going to need a bigger battery bank. So a higher price point, you're gonna want a bigger battery bank. At a minimum, we recommend around 500 amp hours of lithium. In the current van that we are building with this, we have 810 amp hours of lithium battery. So you're gonna need to spend more on the battery bank, spend more on the unit, but it is going to cool your van down more. So it's gonna give you a longer term cooling benefit. It's gonna cool it down more. And to us, that makes it worth it in our bills for our clients to go with the Dometic RTX 2000 over the Fresair. So it is 88 degrees outside right now. We've had this thermostat sitting in here in the van. It is 84 degrees in the van right now. We are gonna kick the Dometic RTX 2000 on, and we have all the window covers up for this van because we're gonna simulate what it would be like if you were in van life. Um, and we're gonna let this thing run. We'll check it at like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and 30 minutes, and give you updates on the temperature. But it's hot in here right now, and I guarantee it is not gonna feel this uncomfortable. My eyeballs are sweating by the time we get this thing going. So here we go. Super easy to turn on, just push the button. Just like that. And I have it set to 62 and I have it on auto. And it's kicking on right now. Because windows are one of your biggest heat transfer, that is why we always recommend if you're sitting, hanging out, put your window covers up, it will definitely help keep your van cool. But as you can see, the van is definitely in the sun right now and it's almost 90 degrees out here. So we'll check in about 10 minutes to see how that bad boy's doing. Huh. Hopefully, mucho better. So it's been about 15 minutes, and this is one of the annoying things about filming videos, because sometimes your equipment isn't always working the way that you want it to. It is definitely way cooler in here. Um, we have had this one set. It was 83 when we came in, and right now it's showing 76. So according to this one, it's seven degrees cooler in here than it was before we kicked on the AC. Now we also have this other temperature sensor, which is showing that it is 61 in here, with a 47% humidity. If the humidities are basically about the same, this one's showing 40% humidity. Um, this one is great because all the sensor is up here. So like if we hold it up to the unit, it will actually tell us what the temperature is of the air coming out of the unit, which right now, it's dropping, it's already down into the 50s. And it is 58. 90 degrees out right now, I'm gonna be 99. So it's 90 degrees outside right now and the air coming out of the unit itself is 57 degrees. So that's quite a big difference. That's a 23 degree difference already. 25 now between what it is outside and the air that it's blowing in, which you compare that to the Fres Air, that's quite a big difference to what the Fres Air is capable of doing. With the Fres Air, we got about 15 degrees difference between outside and inside and what was going on with the air temperature. And then if we look at our control for the electrical system, we are pulling right now 583 watts. Again, this system does cycle and you can't set it on an eco mode, so it would actually be pulling less power than that. So overall, the air coming out of here feels great, feels way cooler in this van than it did when we started. And this has only been 15 minutes, so maybe we'll show you guys what it's like in here after like an hour. We wanted to run through and to show you a few things in regards to the energy consumption and also the efficiency of this unit. So we are in Meridian, Idaho right now. I'll pull up on my weather app to show you. It's 88 degrees outside no, right now. 90. It's 90 degrees outside right now. So this little temperature sensor, it has a humidity reader at the top and then the temperature is at the bottom. Put it up here so you can see the temperature of the air actually coming out of the unit. So the air temp coming out of the unit is about 67. And 
um, is going out about 65, 66% humidity. Um, so really nice, uh, you know, that's a 22 degree temperature difference from what it is outside. That's gonna be really nice in a van when you're hot and you don't have anywhere else to go. I also wanted to run through on the different fan settings, how many amps this is pulling out of our system because we don't have anything else turned on right now. So I'm just gonna look at the picture on BMV and let you guys know. So this is the number one fan setting and right now I'm pulling 1.9 amps. So if you wanted to know what that is in watts, I'm pulling 24 watts, 1.9 amps. On setting two, we jump up 2.5 amps 32 watts. Setting 3, 3.5 amps, 40, 50 watts, 49, 50 watts. Setting, is this 3, 3, 4? Four. 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 Setting 4, pulling 4.83 amps, or 62 watts. And now we're pulling that's the highest setting. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. I know that we threw a ton of information at you guys, so we went ahead and wrote up a blog post, linked down below, which is built on the Squarespace platform. One of our favorite things about Squarespace is that it is so intuitive and easy to use. You don't need to hire an expensive web designer to build your own professional looking website. And it's super easy to write your own blog posts, add pictures, tags, categories, even Amazon affiliate links. So again, there is a blog post linked down below with more information on both of these units, pros and cons of both. And you can even buy them there because Squarespace has a built-in e-commerce platform. So if you're ready to try out Squarespace for yourself, head to squarespace.com for a free two week trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com forward slash 40 hours for 10% off your purchase of a website or domain. That is it for today's video. Like I said, there is a blog post linked down below if this was like way too much information thrown at you all at once. And if you do wanna purchase one of these, they are linked in that same blog post. You can buy directly through us. We are dealers for both of them. We do offer an install guide for the Fres Air, the specific way that we install it. It's a little bit different than the way that Fres Air does it. And as far as the Dometic, you cannot buy it unless you buy it through a dealer. They have great install instructions on their own and actually DIY Van makes a cool rooftop adapter for the Sprinter that we recommend for install. It's a quick and easy install for the Dometic, not too much technical stuff. Fres Air is a little bit different because there is the water reservoir that you have to install, so it's a little bit more technical. Hopefully this helped you decide which of these two options might be better for your van. There is just a bug flying off my forehead, I think. But with that, we are gonna end it here. Hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions about either one of these units, be sure to leave it down below, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.